when an event becomes a lesson a concocted text by Shahin Merali they the people began to write on all sorts of surfaces some even wrote on old tin cans baked beans or macro cans using the bonded liquids of its contents that had now become mildew reminiscent of stump oil. They wrote about Pitika and Thule's sculptures made from bone, including ovoid dreams, a fusion of parts. Its bleary eyes and fingers traced by bright beads remained in the public realm years after it was intermittently shown on the internet. They said the figure wore a mask reminiscent of the COVID epoch, which had a power that spoke to many from different generations. The power to make them write from a will to be included, to log their ideas into a giant jigsaw that started before he carved into the bones of the animals. On a rusty fridge, a family from Kronstadt wrote with the light hues of a disposed through magnets in the form of the alphabet, an ode to the spirit of oid dreams. They must have retrieved a recording made by the Apples and Snakes collective of Untuli in exile in London circa 1985. It emerged as one of the many images by Rod Roger Ballen of an orange free state generation that could neither spell or read. Apartheid, after all, was unable to secure the well-being of the privileged minority. Many others chose to contribute to an open blog with messages to Ntuli or to commemorate his sculptures. The blog was managed by Marshal Mobutu, an aged army marshal from Burundi, whose allegiance remained still with his former army who had trained to shoot at an elephant's graveyard. Many such estranged, if not awkward facts, were consciously collected by John Henry, a postgraduate student funded by SEE US. His ability to search for belief and opinion evidenced in the writings of responses to Petik and Thule included the industrious project by the Nigerian-Japanese artist Ishi Ikuru, based in Kaga, Ishikawa Prefecture. Most demanding of his efforts remain his finely chiseled diagrams and cartoons on decommissioned army weapons, further embellishing old uniforms. Ikuru had spent four years inscribing key characters and scenarios on surplus army uniforms from the 1962 film Hatari, directed by the gregarious Howard Hawks, a film set in Tanganyika starring John Wayne about a group of hunters trapping wild African animals for zoos abroad. Pitika's emblematic sculptures included the bones from the elephant, rhino, giraffe and horses, as well as beads, shells, chains, computer circuit boards, pins, animal skins and marbles were featured epistemically in each army garment or weapon with an enemy character from Hatari. The series by Ikuru is difficult to describe or place in the history of contemporary art. Nevertheless, they were collected and are on permanent view with a section devoted to documentation on Untuli at the Yokohama Museum of Art. In a conference accompanying the Biennale Jogja 14th Equator-4, where two academic papers and a poetic rendition accompanied by a pre-recorded metallophones and xylophones that argued for further dissemination for Pitik and Thule's poetry in relation to his artistic practice. The three speakers collectively stage a challenge for the main academic community whose current understanding of Ntuli's oeuvre remains diachronic. The writers Bethelman and Coombs and the performer Shanti Nugraf offered the apostate privilege 
which they believed allowed them to go beyond the present condition to consider his anachronic relationship to African spirit and spirituality. The above links, minor and major, were revealed in a series of notes by the acclaimed art historian John Berger, whose own historic account on the use of bones in contemporary art had described work in an unpublished essay on the artists, including Pitika and Thule and Jimmy Durham, as a natural, and I quote him here, relation between what we see and what we know is never settled. Each evening we see the sunset. We know the earth is turning away from it, yet the knowledge, the explanation, never quite fits the sight. Meanwhile, for the Suffragette Centenary Exhibition at the Museum of London in 2018, many artists' works were selected, selected to represent the representation of the People's Act, which gave some women and all men the right to vote in local and national elections in the UK. A number of abstract paintings by Pitika and Thule were shown in an accompanying slideshow. Many believe these early works in exile formed a research basis of his subjects for fam of famishing and anger, which formed the basis for his sculptures for the Azibuyele Amasvene exhibition. The postcard set, the postcard set, with a quote by the artist, and I quote him here. I externalized their inheritance shapes to capture the beauty and truth embedded in them. End of quote. Were distributed in the education pack to 32,770 schools in the UK. Many of the children wrote and collaged these cards for the GCE and IB exams, which in return were offered as a resource by the Aga Khan Foundation in Toronto. The UNESCO UNESCO Institute of Education formally presented some of the work by the British students in a reprint publication towards a multilingual culture of education edited by Adama Oene. The editor invited key writers and thinkers to address Intuli's work. Among the respondents were many brilliant contributions. Rastum Marucha, culture critic and professor of theatre and performance studies at the Jawaharlal Nehru University, as well as the first project director of the Museums of Brooms in Rajasthan, stated at a small gathering at the Victoria Memorial, Memorial Hall in Calcutta, and I quote him here, he was a touchstone in the field, end of quote, and he remained intrigued by his, quote again, rhizomic, rhizomatic way of thinking, end of quote. Beijing-based artist Song Dong created a day to write your diary with water on bones as an ode to Pitika and Thule. Previously, Song Dong had used stone, water and a painting brush in his second diaristic performance. The artist submitted the stone for the collarbone. So, sorry, the artist substituted the stone for the collarbone. A multitude of examples can be found in the beguiling website recently curated by John Henry, www.elephantsrus.co.za, which includes photographs, zines, articles and PDFs. Key to the website is the ability to continually update the plethora of references and key works that in Thule's history of ideas has efficiently formed a greater agitation across the Afrofuturistic globe.